the tension. Yes, the dragon slams down onto the ground. Um, and the ports seem to come open. Its body at first sort of uh, rolling around on the ground and then slowly comes to a stop. The black blood twinkling with starlight swirls out of the dragon's corpse in a flowing vortex that starts to meld into the walls of the cavern. Wide paths of parallel glowing silver blue light twinkling with stars travel up the walls along what must have been the ancient dragon's rib cage. The lines of light reflect on the water below, illuminating the vast expanse of this space. As your eyes drift upward, you watch as the lines all come together at the apex of the cavern, where you see a massive, smooth stone that begins to glow as more and more of the light flows into it. The, wall, the walls slowly darken as all of the energy of the blood coalesces into the stone, and all that remains is the sparkling glow of the huge stone in its reflection on the lake below. A moment passes and then a minute, and finally, thump thump, pulses from the stone. So deep and low it rattles into your very core, then silence. In that silence you hear a ting, ting, ting from beside Celia as the ring lays on the ground at her feet. Then another, Thump, thump, and the stone, the heart, beats again, the glow becoming brighter. The stone begins to look translucent as the energy shrinks down into shining bright light within the center of the stone. Thump, thump, on the third beat, you see a form take shape within the heart, humanoid in shape. It crosses from the center of the heart and passes through the wall of the stone, floating there above you, and it begins to descend. As it comes closer, the spectral form comes into view, a tall robed figure with long willowy limbs and shining indigo hair that fans out behind it like a cloak. Beautiful fine features, neither masculine nor feminine, but almost unnervingly symmetrical and flawless in proportion. The most striking feature are the large almond-shaped eyes. They are mirrored pools of silver like liquid mercury, and in the place of irises there are shining golden runes. The figure lands in front of the party and looks from face to face to face. It seems to contemplate for a moment the immensity of what has occurred. It takes a moment of reflection before taking a deep breath. It sort of shakes its head. So, it has come to pass. The guardians ordained by the ancient stars against all odds and obstacles across the millennia have arrived at this time and in this place. Looking at Iska, the singer of the fates, nodding to Cilia, the blade of the plains. To Kel, the soul burdened. Eyes to Luck, the reborn. With a bow to Luna, the mother of the elements, to Iskrin, the shield of the spheres, and with a smile at Axel and the hand of the ancients. I am Gwilin Fura, master of runes and keeper of the glyphs. I was the last glyph scale bastion of this sphere. And we 
have much to do. And with that, we will end today's session.